Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. He manages $160.7 billion in state pension funds. He audits the spending of all state agencies and local governments. He reviews the New York State and New York City budgets. He must approve all state contracts. He's worried about massive state debt and local fiscal stress. He signs my check. He's Thomas DiNapoli, the controller of the state of New York. He is here to talk about the state economy and budget, local fiscal stress, fiscal cliffs, and backdoor debt. And political corruption in Albany again, still? Ah. Mr. DiNapoli was named controller in February 2007 and was elected to the position in November 2010. Previously, he had served in the Assembly for 20 years, representing the 16th Assembly District in northwestern Nassau County. Welcome back, Mr. Controller. Always great to be back. Uh, it, 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 is, it is truly always a pleasure to be in your presence. OK, you just came back from Bangladesh. Yeah. Public junket, what are you, partying? Yeah, yeah. What, why Bangladesh? <laughs> Well, uh, there are a lot of big issues going on there. And first of all, I paid for it myself, so uh, wasn't a, was it a I was going to note that if you didn't, then you would. Uh, I was invited by Stuart Applebaum, who's head of the Retail Workers Union, mm -hmm. RWDSU. And he put together a delegation of um, Stuart from the union perspective, Monsignor Kevin Sullivan, the head of Catholic Charities yep. for the Archdiocese of New York, and myself from not only a government perspective, but as an investor. We hold uh, significant amounts of shares in the fashion brand companies that contract with the factories that produce the, the ready-wear garments. And, and then that's, Bangladesh is the big emerging area. And then you're response. talking about the, the April 2013 Rana, Rana Plaza, Plaza exactly. factory collapse. 1,100 workers People lost died. their lives. Okay, 80, go ahead. 80% of the factory workers in these factories are women. And it's not only Rana Plaza. There have been other factory fires and real issues about building and fire safety code. So our, our goal was to do fact-finding and to meet uh, firsthand with people who survived Rana Plaza and, and some of the other uh, incidents where people were injured or lost lives. So we met with some of the workers. Uh, there was a woman we met with who for three hours was stuck in the rubble, and she heard her co-workers uh, moaning their last breath before they died. Uh, she was fortunate to get out, although she still needs additional surgery. All this is part of the effort for us to as we always try to be invested in companies mm -hmm. that, that do good corporate behavior, mm. to put more pressure on the factory owners to upgrade significantly their standards for, for fire and building safety and for labor rights to be more recognized. You know, this is very much, in 2013, what Bangladesh is going through is what we went through here in New York City with the Triangle Shirt Waste right. Factory. Right. Where, again, it was women, largely, yep. immigrants, at that time Italian and, and Jewish. Yep. And, and poor building and fire code safety standards, and that really gave birth to the sure. labor movement and labor laws. Um, it's the same situation now in Bangladesh. So they're, they're rapidly uh, trying to enhance their economy through these factories, but it should not be at the expense of the workers. Why you as controller? What is it in your institutional position that leads people to want you to do what you just described? Well, you know, you mentioned our pension fund at the outset. So we're, we're the third largest uh, public pension fund in the nation. And, and we make money to pay the pensions for our retirees by being invested very broadly in the stock market. So we're invested in thousands of companies, billions of dollars in, in, in the kind of public uh, shares that everyone's familiar with. And that includes the fashion brand names, the, the, mm -hmm. the big companies. So because we, we are, in effect, an owner of these companies, that because of what's happening in their supply chain, should have some responsibility for what's happening right. on the ground. Uh, we're approached to try to encourage those we invest in to make sure that they are uh, doing the best by uh, the standards of what should be corp good corporate citizenship. Because, I mean, you personally, I mean, institutionally control right. that $160.7 billion right now, 
and John Liu at the moment controls another what, 130? A little less than us, yeah. Yeah, 130 yeah. billion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you guys have, you folks have the power to make immensely important decisions in terms of investment. How did that trip help you figure that out in this one well, area? Well, labor standards have always been a part of, of our, our corporate engagements. Uh -huh. Uh, there's because of the changes in Bangladesh becoming uh, rapidly even displacing China as the number one manufacturing area in terms of the garment industry. Sure, uh, it's, it, it certainly gave me an updated perspective in terms of the importance of this issue, and we've we've now more fully engaged more companies to require what we call sustainability reporting, yep. where they go go into the yep. supply chain. The other issue, you know, not to get too technical, but. The companies have recognized that they need to do something. So you have the European companies have signed on to something called the Accord on, on Fire and Building Safety. There's the American companies have the Alliance. God forbid we should do it all together, right? But so there's some, uh, and there are some companies that haven't signed on to either. Right. So we actually are just starting an engagement with, 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 a, with a, one of the fashion brands uh, that hasn't signed on to either strategy. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm sure that as a follow-up to this trip, we're going we're gonna to be reaching out to even more companies and saying, hey, at the end of the day, besides reputational risk, because you know, when consumers, if they read the tag, sure. you're going to see how much of your garments sure. are made back sure. Hopefully, you will start to look at the, the companies that you're, the, to see whether or not they're involved with right. promoting uh, the appropriate safety standards. We, we, we cannot be getting our garments at a good price with factory workers being killed. So, I mean, you, you do... And their liability questions, I mean, you do all way. kinds yeah. of foreign policy. Well, you know... It's always t but it's always tied to shareholder value. Okay. Right? If if it doesn't, You've got if fiduciary it doesn't, right. and our perspective is reputational risk could could harm consumer confidence in a brand. Liability. I sure. mean, even though it's it's a developing country, they're going to have uh, lawsuits and, sure. and changes sure. in government sure. policy. As they ought. Uh, yeah. Uh, although uh, we are, obviously, as you know, in the New York area, we have a, a, a growing Bangladeshi community. It was yep. also interesting for me, just personally. Good food. Good food and, and hardworking people, but the political dynamic there is very difficult. I right know. Now. Okay. And, and and so that's for another show. But uh, I learned. Let's just say I learned a lot about that country of being there. Okay. Another uh, initiative of the office recently has been this hate crime reporting. Why? What's the extent of the problem? Why? the emphasis of your office on this. Yeah, we're going to be doing an audit of the Department of Criminal Justice Services, which is a state entity that, that oversees the collection of this data by uh, the local police departments across the state. And uh, what ha as you know, there's still too many incidents of hate crimes in our, you know, in our city and in our state. And State Senator Brad Hoylman from Manhattan, right. doing a great job, yep. uh, he convened a community forum because of some of the hate crimes that were happening in his district with regard to the LBGT community. Right. And there were some real concerns raised about the adequacy of the reporting. And unless you are sure that your data is accurate, it becomes harder to do the training, yep. do the community yep. intervention, so on. Yep. So Senator Hoylman reached out to, to my office and said that based on the research that his, his team had done, having the controller's office do an audit Check on the uh, uh, on the credibility of the numbers that sure. DCA just has, and also do an assessment of what kind of training is going on with local police yep. departments. So, uh, without presuming what we're going to find, w you know that's an audit we're commencing at the senator's request. Excellent. And you know, look, unfortunately, it, it's still uh, it's still a big issue in our society. We're, and in New York, we we have every, everybody's here. Not everybody gets along, and if anybody's feeling bullied or or, or, or that they're under in effect under attack through, from a hate crime. Uh, the, the entire community suffers. Oh, absolutely. Let's go to the MTA. One of, I know one of your favorite subjects and one of mine, having ridden on the subway this morning. That they, they've announced at the fair hikes that they had scheduled for 15 and 17 at 7.5 percent, now going to be 4 percent. In part, I, get, I think in reaction to a report that you had done in September, which said, wait a minute, you're sitting on $1.9 billion of unanticipated revenue. Yeah. How did they... How did they unanticipate it? Was was that sort of a, a, a sort of a rational mistake, if you will, or are we dealing with a, you know continued dysfunctional bureaucracy? No, I, I would I would say some of the 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 assumptions that they based their earlier financial plan on changed. Some of the 
costs with regard to employee benefits came in less than had been anticipated. Uh -huh. Some of the revenue as the economy's gotten a little better came in a little higher than okay. anticipated. So I, I, it's not that they overlooked the money, it's just that the updated figures There were marginal showed, changes. Yeah, that, 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 that there was money that they hadn't anticipated. And we said at the time, because the reality is the, the, the fares have gone up much higher, and the tolls for that matter, than the cost of living. And, and so much of the MTA keeping in balance has been borne by, by the riders. Sure. And, and, and so we said, you know, if you're starting to come to a, into a point where you have more money than you anticipated, maybe it's time to take another look at, at, at the toll and fare increases. So, uh, you know, there are still big issues with the MTA on the capital plan. And well, I mean, yeah, well, let's, let's, and, let's, and, the, and the contract with, you know, with the workers has well, expired. Excuse so me. I mean, yeah, other, but let's, let's not forget about sure. it for a moment. Yeah. I mean, what about that? What about those two things? Well, you have to balance all that. But but I but I do think talk that, about each one. But but well, you know, in terms of the labor issue, uh, as you know, in the city, all the unions have been without contracts, and and, and talking, MTA is different than excuse the, the me, city, but I mean, yep. seven point something, six point something, eight point something billion dollars on retroactive uh, yeah. plus yeah, well, no yeah, yeah so no it no no retroactive well it's gonna be very tough but the and the MTA of course is separate from the city but right. but it's kind of in the same boat of of of, of, of these these uh, public workers so sure. so that process they're, they're in negotiations now and 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 as you know Tom Predegas is a newer head of the right. MTA just as is a the new latest, newer. The latest right. newer but he's a confident fellow been around doing right. business for right. a long time yep so my hope certainly is they'll come to some positive resolution, whatever it may be, but um, but that's a, that's a piece of it. Yeah, but that's you've got huge structural issues here in the tens of billions of dollars in capital. This is where the plan is, is not fully funded at this point, right? And, and we don't want to have the system go back to the right. And this is and this yeah. is this yeah. is a drop. But it's all but it's all a balancing act, right? And so so you can't you, raise you, revenue. Well, but there's still tremendous. Well, the revenue was raised on the on the fares, and the revenue is raised on that what mobility, else? That mobility tax that, and you have still from real estate transactions. MTA, MTA is there gets any, a piece of it. Is that. there any way to more rationally tax or distribute the cost over the geography of the system? I know you're a Long gets, Island guy, and I'm a Queens guy, so we're automatically at loggerheads on this. No, one, not go necessarily. Ahead. No, go no, ahead. No, no. No, I go mean, ahead. look, the reality is for our economy, we need that that system to be functioning and well functioning. Um, you know what? Do you, do you I, look? There, there are many debates. You know, including on you know tolling the bridges that don't have tolls right now. Uh, these become very controversial. But you know, right yeah, now well, congestion pricing, yeah, all it's of all that. tied together. And you may see some new proposals on some of this down the road. I, I think the basic point is this: as the economy has started to recover slowly, the MTA between fares and between the mobility tax and between real estate transactions picking up, they are having some more money. So they, 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 you can't just pick one of those key areas we talked about and put all of the new money or unanticipated money in just one category. You do have to strike a balance. And, and I, I don't think, given all the pressure on middle class folks, on working families of those very significant fare increases, it was not unreasonable to say, let's moderate okay. some of it. All right. I, I, because well, that also will encourage more people to, to, use the, to use the system. So. Do we want to encourage more of them to use it, Absolutely. given its crowdedness? Uh, but for lots of, well, look. No, but on my line, they were actually able to restore some of the service right. they'd cut back because people want the service. Yeah. No, no, I, and we I, want I'm fewer a, people I'm in the cars. I'm a subway person. Yeah, no. So, okay, uh, let's yeah. talk about the, the fiscal economic state of the state and of the city this coming fiscal year, I guess 2014-15. State, uh, we're off. Better shape than we've been in. Uh, but this budget meaning what meaning budget staying in balance uh, we should end remember our fiscal year ends March 31st right. it looks like we're on track to, to end it division of budget hasn't updated their numbers we there is expected to be a gap of about 1.7 billion that's For a lot the next smaller year? that's 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 a lot smaller than we've had another For the year. next fiscal year next fiscal year uh, that being said uh, the governor's aim is to keep spending below 2%, 2% or less sure. in the state. Sure. And you know there are recommendations floating out there from uh, these two tax commissions yep. to actually reduce taxes. Now, yep. what's going to happen next year is that the budget process will kick off with the governor's uh, announcement of the executive budget plan. We'll see how much of those recommendations he incorporates. And of course, many of the folks that have been looking for more money for schools or health care, whatever, they're going to have their wish list as well and right. it's, it's an election year i'm told next year so yes. uh so, wait a so we'll see how that all plays yeah, no, out no, no, no. i mean and, and what makes it very interesting is that it's an election year because all of these 
political variables, which are always there, become far more sure. prominent because they're related to you yeah. know my future, my career, yeah, my exactly. election. Yeah. Now, uh, Bill de Blasio's talked about this this millionaires tax. It's not a millionaires tax. It's a slight tax on people making more than a half a million dollars to get pre-K, universal. And the governor said he's in favor of the one and very agnostic, if not negative, on the, on the other. How, do, how does this work out? Because you've got an incoming mayor, new Democrat, the governor. There's all kinds of dynamic here. Could you, you want to speculate a bit? Well, you know, certainly it's, it's a reminder that, uh, that New York City and many of our municipalities uh, can't do much revenue raising on their own beyond yep. their property yep. tax. They're, they're dependent on the, on the state, and certainly that's not 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 uh, new. Uh, obviously, the, the 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 new mayor, who's terrific and bright and wonderful, I think, can do a great job. He he's put a lot. This has been one of his centerpieces to have the uh, funding for pre-K. My, my guess is he'll be able to get that. You know, the question will be whether or not it will be financed through the tax, or whether they'll come up with another way to come up with the money. But that's exactly what they're going to do. He's going to he's going to He's going to have his cake, but he can't eat it, too. Or he can eat it, but Well, look, if, if the bottom line is to get the funding for yeah, pre-K... Yeah, I mean, what's more important? You know, is it yeah. getting the, the, the universal yeah. pre-K or is it getting yeah. the millionaire's tax? Yeah. I'm sure there were ideologues who want, yeah. you know, the millionaire's tax. And some of us who aren't really ideologues might want that, too. But the bottom but, line is getting But you know what? A lot's going to depend on where, where are we going to... Look, is, is, this, is this economy going to continue to move in the right direction? Okay, let's or, talk or, about... And if it doesn't, if suddenly you don't have the ability to find money in other places... You know, you may be back to that tax question, and and it looks like Washington maybe is having a spirit of bipartisanship, but but Ugh. you still got the debt ceiling issue oh, coming up, and if no. and if they blow that one, they got my, I, and and if we wait, default on our obligations, well, if we default on our obligations, besides what it'll do to the U.S. economy and the New York economy, to the global economy, it'll be a complete disaster. Excuse me, and I remember got, they did seventy five and seventy six. Yeah, yeah. Come on. So so there's a lot still riding on what happens. Okay, in Wall Street. Yeah. The economy's changing. We're moving away from Wall Street as the main, well, it's still the main it's still economic very important. driver. It's still, still very, very important. important. Yeah. But you're seeing other sectors growing, like the tech sector. Where, where's the New York City economy headed, in a sense? And where's the upstate economy? I'm worried about the upstate economy. I live in Delaware County. It, we ain't doing good. Yeah. So talk, Whichever one you want to start with. Well, you got with. a lot there. Well, I mean, you're right. The New York State economy is diversified, but we should never move away from the commitment to have New York as, as the uh, capital for, for global finance. Right. Wall Street is still very important. Uh, it's, it's still going through changes, fallout from the recession, fallout from regulatory reform, more productivity, downsizing. Sure. The firms, uh, sure. The, 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 we estimate that in terms of employment, uh, it's down about 13% compared to where we were back in 08. So even though profits are back, right. employment is not back. And, actually and again, the, the greater productivity? Yeah, that's part of it. But yeah. also, you, you know, unfortunately, the corporate model is not just down. Wall Street. Less down. headcount, right. pay yep. people, yep. have less people to pay, yep. you make more yep. money. Yep. And, and, Subcontract that, yeah. Yeah, and the first half of this year, we estimated they, they had about... Uh, 10 billion uh, in profits in the first half of the year. We think it'll be much less than that in the second half of the year. Some of what happened with Washington, and, and they're paying big fines and legal settlements. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's eating around the price. So yeah, yeah. Wall Street is still about 16 percent of the revenue to, to the state, about uh, eight and a half percent to the city. So we, we we can't dismiss it, and we need to still have New York be the the global capital Oops. finance, D diversifying economy. Yes, it's happening. Tourism, hospitality, healthcare. Tech, and as you know, we're investing in the tech sector with our pension. Yeah, no, I, I was going to yeah. come to that. I mean, you, you're doing Silicon Alley investment. Yeah, yeah, in 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 the city, so great opportunities. Upstate, structural issues, demographic change has gone on for a long time. Uh, the governor proposed and the legislature approved the Start of New York program. Right. A lot of that was hope that the SUNY campuses and the CUNY in the city will attract businesses, not having to pay taxes, start up, being on the campus. We'll see how that goes. Uh, whatever you thought about it, casino gaming, that proposition passed. Right. And some of that is held out as a right. economic driver for upstate. Right. Jury's out from my point of view on whether what that'll really mean. Uh, so we, you're telling we, me we, not we, much. Well, no, no, no. Uh, you look at you look at the investment in the in the nano uh, tech industry, okay, in the capital that's region. Okay. Really I'm, I was away. being a little and, harsh. And, and there's been a significant effort, particularly with Buffalo, which is doing much better right now. And again, here's another place where our pension fund uh, has put a priority on in-state investing. We're, we're invested in uh, 
Now about 256 companies represents a, a close, a little under $700 million, uh, and a lot of that's upstate. So the potential is there. The, 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 the people power, the intelligence, the great university systems we have. The problem is we graduate these great young minds. And they leave. They can't get a job. Anymore. I know. And they leave. I know. So I mean, it's, it's a struggle. Where, where I am it, in Delaware it, County, yeah. it's the same story. Yeah. And we've got uh, uh, SUNY Oneonta, we've got Delhi, we've yeah. got colleges and great universities colleges, yeah. around but, but us. Up, but for, for many of these communities, it's, it, it's the same as it is downstate. It, I think it's the combination of, of the universities and the colleges and the healthcare sector. That becomes, you know, the hub. And you and need we have sort of the creative class, if you will. But then you've got, you know, it's then a you've, got, you've got hom homogenized upper middle class gentry. Don't start me. Let's move on. I've, I will talk class about class warfare. Yeah, I'm yes, yeah, show. right. I class can't believe it. Stop. I can't believe it. Local fiscal stress. Suffolk's and a mess. Nassau's a mess. Oyster Bay's a mess. What's the story? It's a mess. How do they get out of the mess? You're smiling. It's a mess. Well, it's interesting because when you talk about stress, I look at it from a statewide perspective. And 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 you take a place like Nassau, where I live, one of the wealthiest counties in the United States of America. Excuse me. And, and, and they've been in stress for, you know, a dozen uh, years. Right. Even with the state giving a hundred million dollars and, a, and a an oversight for right, right. Knife. What's wrong with so, those people? So, Is it the so, water? Well, no. It's, it's, it's some, some bad decisions made over a long period of time. And on top of it, the recession and, and the structural changes in our economy that's hurt everyone. Upstate, you're talking about a different picture where the communities that we identify in stress, in many cases, they're dealing with demographic change, losing their industrial base, people moving away, an older population left behind, sure. needing more services, sure. costing more, sure. and state and federal support, flat or going down. Right. You know, yep. and, and, I, and I, I've said before, if the state is going to start to be in a, in a more flush time, and we'll, you know, we'll see where that's headed, it may be time to look at, again, how we provide the funding through what we call our AIM program, the aging municipalities, to help some of these. Uh, you go to a place like Syracuse, Mayor Stephanie Miner has been very outspoken about the challenges she's facing and, and her limited options to deal with it. Yeah, and we can't have any of our cities going to bankruptcy. We do not want to have a Detroit or a Stockton, California. Yep, yep and you don't want to, I don't mean, want. in Suffolk, don't even go there. I mean, it's big, almost the biggest mess is Nassau. So you've got all of these things. Newsday, a couple of months ago, talked about the dominoes. I mean, if you've got these towns failing, we're in trouble. See, that's why we have our fiscal monitoring program so that you, we can early on identify what's happening. The, the governor and the legislature established the local government restructuring board, right. which I'm a part of. Yep. You've had two municipalities that have applied for recommendations and perhaps get, get aid. Uh, Rockland, another county that's in, a bad, in bad shape, yeah. the governor just signed the legislation that allows them to do deficit financing. And instead of a control board, it's very interesting, for the first time, the controller has the uh, requirement to review the budget of Rockland ah. and make recommendations that the legislature and the county executive have to adhere to. A coup d'etat. Well, not a coup d'etat. No, 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 I'm sorry. Saying, it's basically saying locals that have problems in exchange for some help from the state. Right. And the you, you are subject to greater scrutiny and oversight. We did this in New York and did fiscal. Well, but that's really the model. Yeah, See, I, so, no, so, I understand. And, 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 you know, the, the, the control board still exists. You know, we meet yeah. once a year. No, I know. Uh, and, and I don't know that we're going to have control boards all over the state. I don't think people want that. But no. in New York, our history has been we prevent municipalities from going into full meltdown or financial crisis because we don't want a bankruptcy. Oh, yeah, we I, do not okay, want to have what's okay, happening. Okay, we don't have much time. State pension, yeah, that's right, stand up straight. <laughs> State pension fund performance. Yeah. What, you're, you're starting to make money. Yeah, well, well look, other than, other than that terrible year of 08 and 09 where we lost 26% uh, uh, you know, value of the fund, which was horrendous, we continue to make money. Uh, our fiscal year, again, is March 31st. So right. 10.4 10, 10 was our... Uh, our number for last year. The, the quarters are, are, you know, coming in. This quarter, I think we, we continue to do well. We, we lowered our assumed rate of return a couple of years ago to 7.5%, so uh, we're being smart. It's, it's a challenge. Uh, a big part of our portfolio is fixed income. Money's for free these sure, days. Hard sure, to make money sure, there. Sure, sure. We are dependent on the stock market doing well. So sure. as you know, so far yep. this year it has been doing yep. well. And we have we diversify. So we have investments in private equity and real estate and and uh, opportunistic and a little bit in hedge funds to give us some balance sure. because the stock markets when they're great everybody says put all your money in stocks and when they tank everybody says why do you put all your money in stocks? Right. So right. so we right. you know we do try to mix it well, up. Second uh, guessing is so much fun. Yeah, but still New York has the best funded of all the big state plans. 
defined benefit plans are sustainable. We do good things by investing in New York State. We didn't talk about the small business lending program we have as well. We haven't talked so, about it a lot. Now, in so fact, I before we end, I'm going to list all the things we didn't talk so about. So I'm still a big, big uh, supporter of our defined benefit plan for our public employees. Okay. Retirement security is an issue we need to work on for private sector workers that don't have access to these benefits. Okay. Real quick. Yep. Two things that really fascinate me and really deserve more time are your efforts about privacy transparency. Transparency uh, and disclosure, yeah. the the ATT resolution, right. and then the companion Verizon, Verizon resolution, yeah. and also your corporate political spending disclosure, yeah. which Citizens we've, United. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, after we we've talked a bit about the second. Talk about this privacy, transparency, and disclosure. We only have two minutes, but go. Well, we we, we see what's happening with the revelations about uh, America, pri private information about Americans' uh, uh, telecommunications. Uh, being disclosed to government agencies. We understand we're in a tough world and security issues are important, but uh, the internet companies have uh, done uh, reports on a regular basis just to say what kind of information has been asked, how regularly is it asked, how many customer uh, communications have been revealed. We think that uh, AT&T and Verizon should do the same. Will you get it? We filed a shareholder resolution. As you know, the pushback has been pretty strong. Both yeah, AT &T very, and Verizon. very. And we're not saying that they should violate any national no, security no, laws. No, 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 no. But at least let us know broadly what's happening. I think consumers have a right to know yep. whether, the, whether their information perhaps may be given out to government entities. Uh, I think this is a movement that's, that's going to grow. We may not win it on the first go around, but we'll see. First time we, we, we put in a resolution like this. Excellent. And also the, 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 the final thing, I guess, is corporate political spending disclosure. Yep. I mean, with the Qualcomm decision and all that, you really opened up a whole area here. Now, we're sort of waiting on the SEC to really and so far finish off. They haven't it. done yeah, it we, yet. Yeah, you know, we wrote to Mary Jo White, who I'm a big fan of early on. They haven't tackled it yet. After Qualcomm, we ended up getting a number of other agreements, and we're still going to press on that area. Okay. News. Let's break some news. You're Break airing. some news. Come on. I'm, I'm What's running, coming up? I'm running again in 2014. No, I'm, I'm running against No, you, you can't. I'm running. I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving back. I'm running. I'm going to challenge your residence. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Controller Tom <laughs> DiNapoli for joining us this week. See you next week when Joyce Pernick, Errol Lewis, and Angelo Falcone discuss Mike Bloomberg and his legacies here on CUNY TV. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email, whatever it is. Thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it, send it.